Hi everyone, I'm XPT and this is my first TFT guide. In this guide, we will cover the ninjas, elementals plus pike composition, made up of pike, akali, zed, shen, kenan, lissandra, and brand. Now let's talk about the strength and why build into ninjas elementals. The first thing is that it is an S-tier team composition. It's a very strong composition where each unit complements one another, and this allows it to come online early. You're going to be able to get all of your relevant units at ideal times. If you are the type of player who would like to force a team comp, then this is one of the best candidates to do so. It abuses the power of Pike with Shoujins and Elementals, and it can snowball you through the mid-game into the late game, and guarantee top 4 in most of our games. Because of this, it's one of the most consistent strategies to go for in TFT currently. There is only one variation of this team composition, and not much flexibility. This means that we know exactly what we're going for, so it ends up being a beginner-friendly team composition that is great for gaining experience in competitive TFT. As we do not need to waste our energy thinking about all the other options, and we can prioritize our economy for the comp from the early game. Another thing that I like about this team composition is that it is quite fun to play as it is very fast-paced and oftentimes feels like you are in a race against time. So for the weaknesses, we are not 100% sure how it will pan out in the next patch 9.14, when other synergies such as demons or shapeshifters get buffed. But regardless, since another very strong current composition that does well against ninjas elementals is getting nerfed, six sorcerers while stacking lockets, we can expect this ninjas elementals team composition to become more popular. Also in high ELO, it is already quite popular, and many streamers already use this strategy quite consistently. The rising popularity of this team composition means that we might find ourselves having to compete often for other units with the other players in the arena. Another problem is that in the late game, we often find ourselves getting outshined by other comps that scale better into the late game, and we can struggle to close out games if the other player knows how to beat it. A final weakness of this comp is only relevant if we always insist on forcing it. If we want to force this comp, which we can, we will often find ourselves in situations where we are not maximally efficient with all the resources given to us that could have been better utilized going for another strategy. But this may not be a big deal if we are less experienced in the game, or we just want to use this consistent team composition in our games. The next question would be, when is a good time to commit to this strategy? This is a comp which is possible to force. Just because of the fact that it is so consistent making it an S-tier comp in the current metagame. Just know that if we do decide to force it from the start of the game, then we are less likely to get ideal situations for it in every game. We will be less likely to get as much efficiency from our items, and it may take longer for the comp to hit our required power spikes. We'll also miss the opportunities to go into other comps that may be more efficient given our current resources in the game. That being said, forcing this comp can never be a huge mistake right now, as if we do force it, then we will have a good plan in advance. This means that we won't waste any resources or economy dabbling around the other options and even in non-ideal situations, we can usually pull through a top 4 finish. If we are the type of player that would prefer to keep their options open, and have some clear signals given to us before committing to any particular team composition though, then ideally, we would pick up early components for Shoujin Spear, such as BF Sword and Tear of the Goddess. And we would also pick up some early Zeds, Pikes, and Kha'Zixes to have an early 3 Assassin synergy going, that will transition us smoothly into the mid-game where we hit our power spike. This will be our final team composition as already stated earlier. It's not very flexible because each unit complements one another and is essential to complete the final composition. In total, we will need 7 levels to place our 7 units. It is important to note that all of our champions are tier 2 through tier 4 champions. 1 cost units and 5 cost units are not a part of our final composition. These units together create 3 very powerful synergies. The 4 ninjas are Akali, Zed, Shen, and Kennen. The 3 elementals will be using are Kennen, Lissandra, and Brand. And finally, but maybe most importantly, is Pike, who completes our 3rd assassin, along with Zed and Akali. 
Pike will be our main carry through the early to mid game and help to ease our transition into the final 7 man roster. In the late game, we could potentially swap out Brand or Lissandra for Nivea, especially if we can 2 star her. However, this isn't really necessary and the game is rarely going to reach this stage. If we do, get to the late game and end up with 8 spots for units, then generally just put in some disruptor, such as Blitzcrank, Cho'Gath, or Sejuani, to act as a bit of a distraction. But this almost never happens and we should not be pushing for level 8 in 90% of cases. Trying to level up to 8 is usually going to be a waste of our economy, and we should nearly always be attempting to maximize the potential of our final 7-man roster. I will explain more about this and the execution of this strategy in the following slides. Now let us cover the items that we want for our team composition. The most important item component that we want to be looking for will be BF Swords. Swords build well into tons of components, most importantly Shoujin's Spear. This is why getting some early tiers is also great for this team composition. If we cannot get early BF Swords or tiers though, it is still not the end of this strategy and we can still benefit by picking up some recurve bows to turn into a rapid fire cannon for Zed later, or some rods to potentially turn into some morellos or death caps in the future. Unlike many other team compositions, since we want to reach level 7 but do not necessarily want to go past it, spatulas will not serve much purpose and should actually be avoided. The defensive items such as Giant Spelt, Negatron Cloak, or Chain Vest are not the best, but they can be built into some B-tier items for this team composition later, so they will still not be terrible. As mentioned earlier, one of the best things about this team composition is that it is consistent and we can force it. This means that it is not super reliant on items unlike many other compositions. Rather, items are just very helpful and can be the difference between having a mediocre game where we place fourth or a great game where we finish in first position. For the items that we want to place on our carries, I separated them into tiers. A tier items are our essential items that we really want to be placing onto our carries in most of our games. They give the champions huge power spikes, so getting these A tier items onto our carries should be our number one item priority. It is important to note though, that just because these are A tier items, you're not going to lose a game just because you do not have them on your carries. But if things go well and we build these items onto our carries, the chances of winning go up considerably. The B tier items are more secondary or situational items that are good on our carries and not at all necessary to win games. However, they definitely strengthen the power of our carries and are still good items to place onto them. You'll notice that there are only three A plus B tier items together for each champion. This is because if I could have a perfect game with all the items I wanted to for my carries, then these are the three items that I'd end up placing on them with priority pick order from A tier to B tier. C tier items are items that you should only really place on your carries as a last resort and when you're not getting the proper components to create A or B tier items. If an item is not listed on either of the tiers, then it's probably not worth considering at all for our carries. In this video, to keep things short, I'll only go into a bit more detail on the A and B tier items. So Pike, with double spear of the Shoujin, is really overpowered and broken, and it may not be so fun to abuse game mechanics, but if our goal is to win, then we should be doing so. One spear of the Shoujin is already strong in Pike, but stacking two of them? That's broken. Stacking two Shoujins onto Pike allows him to pretty much spam his ultimate, both dealing a ton of damage and stunning what can feel like the entire enemy army for the duration of the battle. It's because of how overpowered he is that we can be strong in the early game through to the late game, where we start to become more reliant on our other carries a bit more. Pair the Shoujins with the Morellos for some extra damage and a healing debuff. Zed is a bit more interesting and controversial. A lot of people dismiss the strengths of Zed as a carry, but I found that if we manage to 3 star our Zed and we put an RFC onto him, he can become the main carry of this team composition into the late game. The reason why Rapid Fire Cannon works so well on him is threefold. Firstly, it just synergizes really well. 
The extra attack speed grants a good deal of additional damage, which is helpful as Zed does deal a lot of damage through auto attacks. Secondly, it gives a bit of extra range, crucial in reaching the enemy carry when trying to fight versus a team that is turtling and protecting the carry under all costs. Thirdly, it means that our auto attacks are undodgeable. This is great since a lot of people build phantom dances as a counter to assassins. Now, if we do manage to 3-star the Zed, then the Eye Edge and Phantom Dancer will be the tools that turn our Zed into one of the strongest late-game carries in the game. It won't be too often that all of these conditions are met, and we definitely should not try to rely on this. But when we pull it off, it's a sight to see. Whenever I get a 3-star Zed with these items onto him, I see it as a huge sign that we are in a great position to end up winning the entire match. Akali is usually going to be our main carry in the late game, when we don't manage to get Z to 3 stars. If we are able to get Akali to 2 stars and put a Rabidon's death cap onto her, then her ability 5 point strike is going to hit the enemy for a ton of damage. She's also great since she deals some mixed damage and isn't as reliant on auto attacks or crits, meaning that it's going to be harder to itemize against us. In order to complete Akali's itemization, I like to build her with a Phantom Dancer and or a Dragon's Claw, which are great defensive items that allow her to stay alive a bit longer and keep on dishing out the damage. Finally, as a little shout out, I do need to mention Brand. Brand is obviously one of the strongest champions in the entire game, but I don't want to focus on him too much in this guide, so I'm just going to mention that he's a great person to pile some items on, and basically have as an alternative carry if for some reason we cannot get the proper items on our main carries. Good items to place onto him in no particular order would be Ginsu's Rage Blade, Rabidon's Death Cap, Morello Nimicon, Seraph's Embrace, and Luden's Echo. If you watch the video up to this point, then I'd like to thank you. As this is a comprehensive guide, I decided to split this guide into two parts. In the second part, I'm going to be covering the most important part of this team composition and teamfight tactics in general, the execution. I'll try to explain what to focus on through the early to late game, as well as positioning. In the description below, I'm also going to link part 2 of the guide, as well as a couple of VODs of my gameplay with this particular team composition. In the meantime, if you like this guide and you want to hear more from me, then make sure to follow me on Twitch. I'll link my stream in the description below as well. Also, like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. This is XBT, and I'm over and out.